Welcome back. We had memory full. <laughs> so the point I was making before our memory died was that I think when you do things creative, it kind of helps your mind, body, and soul relax, you know? I think it's quite important to just take a little bit of time and do things that you're passionate about and that you enjoy, and, and also new things. Okay, so it looks like you are ready to weave your weave. first row. You have overlap and overlap. Not only that, but even if it had been that side and you did that, that matches that. And you want it to be opposite. Opposite. Just as if you were weaving another row out here. So an easy Makes way sense. to think about doing it might be like that. But if you start on the outside, you're only overlapping three. So we're going to turn it one more side. And if you look at it like this, see how I'm just weaving that in, in the bottom and then taking it to here? Well, then if I say, okay, well, I've got to turn it up like this, you'll see that you are starting on the outside. So okay. put a clothespin there. And now because I started you at the corner there, now you're going to do your corner things. Very good. I'm going to continue weaving my basket. And I'm going to continue over, under, over, under in my head. <laughs> is it the voices in your head again? It is. It is. I, I keep saying, I have said for 30 years that I'm going to sit down the edge of this so they can't roll, and I never do. So I'm just going to put a clothespin on there so it doesn't keep rolling. I can knock it off of the table 20, 30 times. I ended up, <coughs> pardon me, I ended on this side, so I'm going to start on the next side. And I'm going to turn it up like this. And I had the corners uh, clothespin and I took that off so that I could start it. And uh, we had a very detailed segment called Weaving the First Four Rows mm -hmm. and showing you exactly how to manipulate this around and get a nice square corner without creasing it. And I encourage you to continue to use clothespins if you need to. The other thing, remember to keep these straight up and down. So, just kind of coaxing that around. And it is a little awkward, but it's first, not as bad as it looks, really. First two rows are the hardest. Mm -hmm. After you get through these first two rows of weaving and you get your shape pretty well set, it's pretty much it paced yeah. after that. And see, I'm dealing with this great big long piece. And, and she's being nice to me. But you can cut them if if you want. If you want to cut them so that they're easier to manage, you can lay it across the bottom and just kind of go one, two, three, four, and add some because you know that that's about how much it takes to get around. Or if you want to just cut your pieces like we did with Evie's, the pieces that she is starting with, the first four rows, they were cut the same length as the spokes. And as you all noticed, I had to go back and fix an error. You did! At and the corner. You figured it out in, yourself. In Cheryl's detailed first couple of rows segment, she specifically said 
be careful at the corners. And guess what I did not do? I was not careful at the corners, and I had to redo. But I didn't remind you. No. I should have reminded you while That's we were right. making the basket to remember. And now I have all these clothespins I kept asking for, and I'm going to shove them out of the way because I don't need them for a while. What happened and how I realized that I had made the mistake, I got to the beginning and realized that, wait a minute, it's not going to cover that. It wasn't ending right. Something's wrong. So, so that's when you go back there. Over, under, over, under, over, under, all the way around, it's and also, then I found it. It's also helpful to put a clothespin on that center one right oh, there. Oh, thank you. To help keep it so it's straight up and down. Okay. There you go. So over, under, over. So I get pretty zealous about putting those clothespins on. <sighs> Didn't pay attention. And then when you get to take them off, like I've taken mine off, it's a lot more fun. I'm going to take this piece and decide whether it's long enough because I can already tell it's not long enough to go around this one whole time. And this basket is small enough that I'm not going to splice this piece, but I will save that for another basket. So I'm going to check the bad side from the good side here. Alright, and now... It appears that I have done this row correctly this time. I need to go back and kind of... Okay. Yeah, the corners look good. Yeah. See, when I put my hand inside of it and mm -hmm. I kind of square it, it looks good. Okay. So, we'll go over here and do the same thing. Be a little bit more careful. When, when you close pin your corners up, you don't want to get one of them way over like this and then like this because this is then going at an angle. Gotcha. When you come over here to weave, it's kind of wonky. So I, I want them straight, My favorite, but together. Or, yes, okay. together. Very good. Straight, but yet still together. Okay. Okay, so. Let's see, I want that one out. That's the new word, wonk. It's <laughs> wonk. It's like, this one, it's not quite long enough to overlap four, but you can just overlap the two. Alright. Alright, so let's we'll overlap that one. Okay. We'll cut there right. and we'll tuck it in. Yes. Okay, so you'll see me with my glasses down like this a lot because these are these are trifocals and I have office glasses for my computer, and then I also have reading glasses, and none of them work for me very well when I'm trying to look at close up for basket making. So it's easier just to not have them on. They're a pain anyway. I cried the day that I couldn't wear contact lenses anymore when I went into trifocals. But yeah, I don't know what well. I would do if I had to go to glasses now. I just don't know. All right, so now. This is the ending. Right. I'm going to turn it one. You got it. One time, one time. And I'm going to look for the good and the bad side. Bad side. Now, in our sample basket, I made four rows of natural, and then I did five rows of color, but I want to make this one asymmetrical. So I'm going to put a couple of more rows of natural. Oh. In the, so, let's take those off. Well, that's somebody on Periscope. <laughs> Life goes on. You thought it was somebody whistling. Yeah, there, I was right? like, yeah. <laughs> hey there. Okay, so feel free to deviate from the pattern on okay. this. Because that's the fun part of making baskets is that you can use the same materials and change it up here or there. You could, you, I could make a hundred of these baskets, literally a hundred of these, and not make a duplicate. And sometimes it might be something like, oh. I want to put a colored spoke in the middle here, oh. and in the middle here, and then when you start weaving with the color, then you end up with like a, vertical color one and awesome. really cool 
about it. You forgot to put a clothespin on your star. See what it's doing? Okay, let me show you what it's doing. It's climbing up on her. No wonder I was having issues. And you've got this started way, whoops. You've got it way over where it should well, be started. Originally. Right, because you didn't clothespin it. You learn from my errors. That's the <laughs> importance of clothespinning. Now, since that's kind of wonky there, mm -hmm. you just want to kind of push okay. that there and kind of square it up. So you really manhandle it the first oh. couple rows to, to literally make it do. I'm trying to be all... Oh, no, you need to be the boss of this basket because it's going to try to do what it wants to do. Don't let it do what it wants to all do. All right. So I think this is long enough for me to go one more time so i'm going to go one more time and i'm remembering to pack each row down and don't worry when you have your supplies and you actually start making your basket you are not going to be able to weave as quickly as i am but i i don't know how to do a lot of things i don't uh, I tried to knit when I was younger. I tried to crochet, and the friend who was trying to teach me how to crochet said, You're doing it way too tight. Loosen up. And I said, I'm so used to making baskets where everything has to be tight. And you want me to loosen up? So my sample piece started like this, and then it went like this, and then it went like this, and this. And I just don't do well with, like when I try to knit, I can knit, I can knit, but I, I can purl, knit and purl, I couldn't do that backwards purl. I haven't done it in years. And then I could, I, I don't read directions very well. No, she doesn't. That's my job. Well, <laughs> to actually read directions, and it's, it's always been difficult for me, and I, that's part of my ADHD. And that my reading comprehension tested about the 16th percentile. But give me a basket to look at, and I can make it from looking at it. But I don't read instructions. I call them instructions. <laughs> I don't read instructions very well. So I just don't. And that's why I make up a lot of my own baskets, because I don't have to follow what somebody else is telling me I should be doing. Good. You got that little that little spot right there. So I have my six rows of natural, and now I'm going to put some of this variegated reed in that I dyed. So stop me when you need help here. All right. I'm still kind of... I'm just put that in the water just in and out. This really is probably one of the most time-consuming parts right here, A, because I'm kind of a perfectionist, and I have to double-check everything I do. And also, just because it is a little, it's a little awkward. I don't know if you can see, but when I started that, I see that that reed is split. I'm just going to trim that split end off, like you trim the split ends off of your hair. And the quarter inch, remember, if it gives you any kind of a fight, because this is a larger piece trying to work against a more narrow piece, so... You'll have to be you'll have to be the boss of it. Not oh, sure. Oh, never mind. Got it. Got a manhandle a little bit. Yes, you do. So I started that a little too far over the edge. And so I need to just trim that back a little bit farther. Otherwise it would stick out on the inside. And that would be kind of ugly and I just dropped my breed. All right, Cheryl, yeah. so I'm, if you wouldn't mind, I'm just going to let you. No, I mind. I'm Double teaching. Double check me, I'm teaching please. you how to make a basket, but I mind. Yeah. <laughs> help me, help me. All right. Okay, that first row is, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a little tricky to get that packed mm -hmm. down. So you just have to, that's okay. when a tool comes in handy. Okay. And these little hairs, that one wasn't so little, that was a big honky wonky one. And this one, I tend to pull those off. As you go. Okay. Yes. And I want to tell you something else. Some people hate these.
these hairs so much, including basket judges for 4-H. So what you can do, if you don't want to have to trim all these hairs later, which you don't have to, you're not making this to be judged. You're making it for yourself or for a gift. I think you're making it for a gift. Yeah, I am. But if you really want this smooth, you can just take a piece of sandpaper. You can cut most of these off and just run it through a piece of sandpaper and take those off. Before you even start? Yes. Yeah. Because what happens is, like, up here, these are kind of hairy. Mm -hmm. Well, as you're going under, over, under, air, over, you're pulling more hairs off. Ah. Okay. So, like I said, all right, so here, here's a, an issue right here where you took the, the corner piece and this side piece and you clip them together and it's making the side wacky. Oh, okay. You're supposed to have your two corners. corners. Oh, okay. And truthfully, after my clothespins come off, after the first row, I don't leave the clothespins okay. on. You can for security. But if you do, remember to do the two corners. So my analogy here, this is the bride and this is the groom. Okay? Okay. Bride and groom. They get married and then they split up. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So that looks really good. Awesome. So now you can continue. All right. Now I started here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to flip it one. Right. And I can get rid of that close pin now. And it's really easy as you're getting ready to weave to forget this step. Check for the bad side. Check it for the sure side. And sometimes I get into some, such a, a rhythm and just relaxing. And we've got the tunes turned up, which we don't have them turned up too loud because you're, you're trying to listen to us and watch us. But when... When we don't have the camera on, we're, we've got the tunes jamming. Yep. So, <laughs> because we like our classic rock music, you know, because yes, we, we were, we you're were telling our age. 60s kids. Oh, yeah, well, we were 60s kids and we're I'm, proud of it. But I wasn't born then. I'm I just proud of my age. I just like the, I like the 60s. <laughs> I like the 60s that I'm in now. <laughs> 50, 40 was a piece of cake. 50 was nifty. Isn't that what they say? And yeah, then, still what did there. they say about the 60s? Oh, I just almost, see, I wasn't paying attention. I almost got that hairy side of that oh. on the wrong side. See, even the teacher can do that yeah. when she's not paying attention. Nifty 50s. Sexy sixties. I five. Oh, you're supposed to high no. five. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, you owe me a coat. Punch. No. Yeah. No punch. No, no punch. No poke. punch. No punch poke. You owe me a coat. Yep, that's it. No. Nope. Pinch poke. You owe me a coke. diet coke. Yeah. Because I don't drink that regular coke. coke. As soon as they came out with Diet Coke, how many years ago? When I was in Florida visiting my mom and dad when they came out with Diet Coke. That's where I first had it. And I'm like, oh, goody. My thing was always tab. Oh. Our battery is going to be dying soon. We'll yeah. be right back with you. Yeah. Let me see if I can get this right okay. finished. That's really pretty. I love those Pretty. variegated right Yeah, here. I like the variegated. We love it. Okay, so I'm ending that row. Up. Be right back. my memory card. We'll be back.